Hey guys, hope you're well. Today I have a rundown of a most controversial character in his case. That is, of course, DOA. And I want to say there are a bunch of comments saying, don't address DOA, don't talk about anything that he's doing. Guys, journalism and reporting is, is not selective. I have committed to reporting every single case involving in Scientology. And I think we as a group are universally rooting for the failure of Scientology. And regardless of some of the dynamics that people certainly have disagreements with Scott's <laughs> actions, at the end of the day, I think we can all agree that he did effective work protesting against the Church of Scientology and that he deserves to essentially get this restraining order case filed by Jalen, Jaden Wheeler with his attorney, Kendrick Moxon, that it should be thrown out. So guess what, guys? I'm going to cover it, whether you like it or not. I might lose subscribers doing this, but... I promised people I'd give them the information. This is an important case. So if I lose some subscribers, may that be damned and may that be the case. If you do like what you are watching, uh, I do have a GoFundMe for various motels. I want to continue covering Scott's case as well as Danny's next week as well as Josiah's. So if you want to help out with a little crappy motel for a night or two, I got a GoFundMe and a Cash App and all of that jazz. So that is on the link. Uh, so we'll just talk about part one. This is part one. Uh, on the lunch break now, so I'll have a more substantive part two when the trial actually commences, but the trial hasn't actually happened yet because there's been so much brouhaha and back and forth about who to get where and when as a witness and what that logistical process would be like. So I'm going to say Scott had a massive, massive victory today. And initially, last week I was informed that Scott was going to try to get Kendrick Moxon on the witness list. Kendrick Moxon, of course, he's the attorney for Jaden Wheeler and has been a very high-profile Scientology attorney in a number of other cases as well. You could think of the involvement in the wrongful death lawsuit of Lisa McPherson, for example. She is the one that was holed up in this hotel room without any medical care. She was a Scientologist. A hotel room, that's the flag base, that's the giant hotel in Clearwater. So he's been involved in a myriad of high-profile cases. So Scott was trying to get Kendrick Moxon the witness list. The reason being is that Kendrick Moxon was using all of the material of Scott's filming, all of Scott's live streaming videos, as evidence. Scott recently made the argument, well, how I need to verify the video. I need to verify that uh, everything is accurate, that nothing is cut out. And since I'm the one who filmed the video and you're not trying to add anybody as a witness who filmed the video because Scott's the only person who filmed it. Because of that, he needs verification from Moxon. Again, if Moxon were smart in all these incidences, or if Scott were truly in the wrong, you think Moxon would be able to take a myriad of, of footage available from one of the many uh, security cameras possessed by Scientology that, of course, are on the Big Blue Building, as well as a number of other Scientology processes. Of course, if they took that objective camera footage, it might be proven that Scott is pretty innocent of these claims of harassment and emotional distress. So he didn't take that uh, tact, and nor if Scientology were really trying to think smart and cover their bases for a future potential lawsuit. Hair's going crazy today, guys. Uh, if that were the case, then Moxon would find somebody else to film all of this from a potentially different angle and therefore all that would all that would would be needed for verification is that witness would be put on the stand the witness who filmed the video and he would just simply state this is unedited or this was edited this wasn't yes what i filmed was accurate uh, i confirmed that i filmed it and it'd be that simple but they never got anybody to film from an alternative vantage point. So, and I'm gonna again get into the quotes directly after I give you a more smoother rundown, but the judge said she was not inclined to accept any of the video evidence because Moxon doesn't want to be on the stand. So Moxon was asked by the judge, do you want to be on the stand? And the uh, and Moxon said no, and then the judge said, you know, it is very out of the ordinary, but if that is the situation, and I, I'm actually gonna, uh, find the exact words for this one, which I found very quickly this time. Uh, if that were the, the exact situation, she's, the judge said to Mr. Moxon, it, this, this is the judge talking, it's not clear to the court how your declaration authenticates 
what is reference. So, meaning, in Mox's declaration, he stated that all the video that he submitted was accurate, everything was properly edited, and therefore that's all, all it needed. The judge essentially indicated that she's not going to buy the argument. We'll see where she actually stands and what she actually rules. Nothing is definitive, but certainly that was a massive uh, negative and a very widely move on DOA's part uh, to try to get Moxon as a witness. Now, of course, if Moxon actually stood as a witness, two things could happen. A, he could perjure himself to court, which would open him up to a Pandora's box of criminal charges. Now, of course, that's a labyrinthian maze, and usually people don't go through the actual process to convict somebody for perjury. But guess what, guys? If you're an attorney, there's something else that's a lot easier to do. Revocation of his law license. That's a much easier process. So, Moxon could have very well gotten his law license provoked. So, you can see why he wouldn't necessarily want to be on the stand. Before all this, there was a little funny little back and forth between Moxon and uh, DOA. Oh, note to self, by the way, the Jim Rash look like character, that's the guy in community, the lawyer for Joey Rocket showed up in the very beginning. So, it's very funny in, the, in this whole trial of streets versus Joey, the attorney uh, kept saying there's no connection, and then yet he shows up at this event after his loss, So, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so he's, so he has a back and forth. He's saying, so you want, the Moxon seems confused to Scott, and Moxon asks Scott, so you want me to testify? And Scott says to Moxon in response, well, this is just them talking back and forth before the court, just me overhearing it. He says, well, you filed many claims and declarations, and the cornerstone of your declaration, of Jaden's declaration, the cornerstone of Jaden's declaration is based purely off of yours. Moxon says, so you want to question me because Jaden relied on, on what I said? Anything else, like 86 GOP? And you're saying this is part of a criminal conspiracy? And then... Uh, is that what you want to ask me about? And then Scott says in response, I don't know. I'd ask about the authenticity of the videos. There's no video of the comments you described in your claim. And it's interesting because one of their three instances, remember, just to give you a quick rundown of all of that, the three instances are as such. Jaden Wheeler felt emotionally disturbed and distressed because there's the antagonism situation where a man had a little dog and, and Jaden felt traumatized seeing all this and Jaden apparently tried to help the man with the little dog even though and Scott kept barking even though the man with the dog in the declaration said that Scott was harassing him, stalking him, following him even though in reality the man with the little dog was walking towards Scott. So that's one incident. The other incident apparently uh, security said Scott hit somebody with a car. Actual video evidence say, says that Scott didn't hurt uh, hit anybody. Third piece of of evidence is simply Scott being allowed before the the day before the convoy on L. Ron Hubbard Way, where constantly three separate security guards say to Scott over and over, you're trespassing, you're trespassing, you're trespassing, you're trespassing. Of course, they felt like they had a legitimate reason uh, to trespass Scott. He did not get trespassed, but they're using that as evidence as to why a TRO would be granted, because in that 40s, uh, in that in that video. Scott denies the request and therefore should have been trespassed and this TRO could potentially take care of that specific trespass. Uh, and at the end of the video, you can see the cops speaking with Scott and there was a new cop on the beat and he appeared pretty sympathetic to what Scott was saying and actually didn't forcibly remove him from any specific situation. So there's not much of a leg to stand on. In that specific video, the video in question, Scott was able to discover that there was 40 seconds taken out. Because of that, and Scott told the judge this, the judge says that she was not going to buy really much of any of the video evidence presented on behalf of... Uh, of Mr. Jaden Wheeler. So that is where we stand now uh, in terms of witnesses. We'll have some witness testimony coming up. We got witness uh, testimony, I believe, from Tori Magoo. Uh, there's an attempt to try to get Danny be put in place there. Uh, and there's a Hispanic name of, uh, uh, of somebody who Moxon wants to testify. You might know his name, so I guess I'll look in... Uh, this list to see if there's anybody else 
uh, that you might know. Though, man, I'm sorry, I can't seem to find the name. It was Guillermo. I think there was a, it was someone named, I think you wanted someone named Guillermo to testify. But there was a, a, a Hispanic sounding person of which Moxon is trying to get to testify. So he's only trying to get one extra other person. Can't find the name, but everything else hopefully you have quickly and smoothly. And I will be back for part two of DOA. Take care, guys. See you in about four hours, four to five. It's going to be a marathon. Bye-bye.